Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So the moment has finally came that everybody keeps asking me about. We're going to put the thumb on the 220 today. We've got the thumb here laying in the shop. We got a work brow thumb. We're gonna get it put on. George is gonna get Guido out of the storage area and he's going to move this thumb around to the front side of the stick. And then we're going to start by uh, getting this pin out and putting the thumb up there and getting the pin slid back in. And we'll have to do some shimming to get the thumb where it needs to be on the face of the stick so we can get that bracket welded to the face. So let's get started and uh, see if we can get it put on today. I know we will have to get some uh, hoses made for the plumbing, but uh, other than that, it should be relatively simple to get this thumb put on. So let's get started. get the pin out of here we gotta get the pin out of here we went ahead and we cut the end of the pallet off because we needed some more uh, clearance to get everything swung in together and I thought well it's probably easier to just cut the pallet off than it is to move the thumb on the pallet plus it kind of works for our advantage we can move it a little bit there we get this bolt out Get me a socket. Probably use the impact, but that ratchet will work for now. Thank you, George. There we go. Oh, we're gonna have to hold that pin. It's gonna want to turn. We actually have a pin. This has to be welded to the side of the quick Oops, the concrete. This gets welded to the side of the quick coupler. That's what keeps that, that pin from turning. So to get 
George is going to pull that pin out. I knew that was going to happen. That's all right. At least it's flat and it didn't hurt the concrete. All right. Oh, that was a nice chip in the concrete, George. Alright, so what we did to set this up is we put shims in. Oh, we gotta get that one on the other side. So we measured from here to here. We got five and three quarters on each side. So now we just need to shim this side so that it's tight against the quick coupler and we should have it. It's pretty simple, really. We gotta get that shim in. Put that one in there. No, just one. So this actually shims between the quick coupler and the stick. This is what was originally in there, so we gotta get this in here.
Well, we got our, all our shims back in. Everything's figured back out. We got the uh, stick and the quick couple are all shimmed back. Uh, the O-rings, they actually have a screw in them so we can uh, put them back in once we're all done with everything. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this plate back on the end. flipped up, get everything marked out that we need to grind paint off of, and we'll start welding. I'm just going to go around and mark where I need grind paint off. Then we'll just swing it back down and grind that off and flip it up and we'll start doing some welding. Right there, that's good.
I've got the thumb tack welded in place really good and we're going to pull the pin out for the cylinder and we're going to get the cylinder put in and get it tack welded in place then we'll get it plumbed up and we want to make sure that the thumb is going to properly work before we weld everything up which it should the way it is right now but i just want to be sure because i hate to do all that welding and then something's just not quite right so it's always better to be safe than sorry well we're going to put the cylinder in now put some tape around that pin. We need to pull it back up. Nope, oh, down a little. Forward, or south. Get the cylinder tacked on, and then we're going to try to fold this thumb out so we can get a determine how long the hydraulic hose is. take the two old hoses that we have from the other thumb that was on this machine and uh, we're going to use them to figure out our length that we need for our new hoses. Being that the cylinder is higher up the stick, they won't work. 
So the great thing about this is we have to go to Laporte to get these hoses made. So that means we get to go to Long John Silver's for lunch, our favorite place to eat. Well, I don't know, George, you really like Long John Silver's all that much? I like the gyros. You like King Gyros? <laughs> well, I don't think there's one in Laporte. So that's what we need right there then. We'll just get a measurement. Where's the tape? Crimp to crimp. From there. To there. Uh, 44 inches. So we need 44 inches of hose between fitting and fitting. And we'll have it. You want them that tight? Yeah, we could add just a little, make them a little looser. Give them a little slack. Well, we got our hoses made. George is gonna start plumbing this up. We'll figure out how to get these hoses held real nice and all that. I'm gonna start welding. Uh, we know that it's gonna work. It can't go on here any other way because it's just not physically possible. And we know that uh, it's, it's moving the proper ways that it should, so there's no reason I can't weld it up now. So, they, Workbrow has said, there, there one guy in Dirt Perfect's video that he has said that they don't recommend to weld this in here, but on Dirt Perfect's excavator, they went ahead and welded it up in there, and I'm going to weld this one up in there because I agree with Mike that uh, we don't want stuff going down in here between the plates and causing corrosion and things like that. So we're going to go ahead and weld it all out. The guy from Workbrow said that he's seen it done both ways, uh, just welding the sides and not welding that, and he's seen it welded, and he said it just he hasn't seen a, a problem yet, so I think we're just going to weld it up and seal it up, and we don't have to worry about anything in that crack, uh, especially if like water or something were to get down in there and freeze, which I don't think it would ever pop any of this off, but it would cause rust and, and uh, corrosion, so... Let's go ahead and seal it up. So I'm going to get the welder and get started here. I'm going to finish running the rollout of wire that's in there, and then we're going to switch to the Arc Captain lead, and then we'll weld it the rest of the way. Well, before we start uh, welding this thumb on, we're going to go ahead and change out our welder lead. Our good friends over at Arc Captain sent us a new lead for our uh, Power MiG 200 Lincoln. Uh, this is actually uh, direct replacement you just plug it in and go it is uh, a lot cheaper than a Lincoln lead so we're gonna see how it lasts it's a nice gun feels real good in the hand looks to be a good lead it's got a spring here to uh, help support the end and everything looks good so we're gonna put it in and see how it works uh, I think the direct replacement from Lincoln's like 350 bucks I think this one was under a hundred. So try it out and see how it works. They also uh, have these for uh, different sizes of Miller welders also. So if you need a new lead and you don't want to spend a lot of money, go check out uh, Art Captain's website. They're all on there. So we're going to get them switched out and see how it works. Sure. Okay. So now we're out of wires. So we're going to go ahead and switch to the Art our captain lead the only downfall to this is it's not nearly as long as the Lincoln one so that's that's kind of an issue call that a short lead but we'll try it anyways and see how it works I'm done in here Stick your uh, little wire in first. Oh, yeah. That does definitely fill a hole up. Going. There we go. 
eventually I'll get it.
right, so we need to cut off our anchor pin, and this is what's going to keep the main pin in the thumb and through the quick coupler, through the stick from turning, so that it turns in the proper place where the bushings are. So we've got one of the new Diablo uh, saw blades and the Evolution saw. We tried one of these in my skill saw when we done the low boy trailer, and it worked great. So I went ahead and I got one for the Evolution saw. So let's see how it works with this big pin that we need to cut. It's cold to the touch. Look how nice of a cut job that was. And it went through it really fast. All right, let's go get this welded on. Well, let's get this welded on. And then that's our last bit of welding other than some uh, holders for our hoses. Are you ready? You got it where you want it, George? All right. Speak now or forever, hold your peace. Well, our welding's all done. George said we're just gonna leave the lines like that because the thumb protects them, so I think he's right. I don't think we're gonna have an issue there. So we're not gonna make anything to hold them. We'll see how it goes. We'll run it for a while and see what we think. But uh, I'm shaking up a can of Genuine Hyundai spray paint. This is the gray color that is the dark color on this excavator. It's actually a gray. Kind of looks green when it's in the sun, but Check out this can of touch-up paint. It is actually in Korean because this excavator was made in Korea. And for those of you who don't know, these are actually made out of scraps from Hyundai's uh, shipbuilding uh, factory. And that's what they get the steel from. It's actually a nautical grade steel that these excavators are made out of. So it's a good quality steel. And they also produce all their own components like their swing motors, travel motors, final drives, things like that. So they're actually uh, some pretty good uh, equipment, really. Um, a lot of people get scared of a Hyundai name, but it's actually a quality machine. This machine's done everything we've asked it to. I mean, we bought it, so here it is, you know. So I'm happy with it, but I just, I get a kick out of this can because spray paint and then the different language pretty cool let's shake this up real good and then we'll do some painting okay so i'm gonna go ahead and paint this pin a little bit here we were curious to see what kind of spray nozzle it had and it's actually got a normal spray nozzle dad thought maybe it had a little like bingo dauber and you spray it on and brush it with a paintbrush but it actually has the normal spray thing don't quite match that but it'll work a little different gray than what work brow works or uses but it'll get uh soot from the fires and stuff on it and you'll never even know it now we'll go ahead and we'll paint all the way around the thumb brackets
Look at that. No more primer spot on the stick now. You gotta be careful with this because it, it is some running paint. You gotta move pretty quick with it. So, looks really nice so far. Let me scoot this down a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Oh, this looks nice. Anything like that? Don't have to be perfect because it's going to get uh, smacked with trees and all kinds of stuff and chipped off over time from demolition. But it'll look good for a little bit. Go ahead and repaint all these scratches down here. Like I said, it'll get wore off again eventually. Looks nice. All right. So we did weld everything up with this Art Captain welding lead, and this thing worked really good. George, you want to show your favorite part? <laughs> George likes how the ball works on the bottom. It uh, It's nice because it allows the uh, lead to move and doesn't bind up in your hand. And we welded pretty hot with it, and uh, everything is still intact. Thread this off. There must be some spatter in there or something but everything's still intact nothing's melted so it worked really good for the price point definitely it worked really good the only complaint i have is the lead's a little bit short but i'm gonna see if they have a longer one that's what 10 foot that one's probably 15 so yeah that extra five foot you notice it but uh, it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to find out. Maybe they'll make longer ones. We'll see what happens. So, all right. We're going to finish up a few things. And then uh, it's time to go home. Okay. So it's all welded up. All painted up. George got it greased. He's got one fitting he can't get to because of the distance between the boom and the stick. So I'm going to have to swing it out. And then we'll demonstrate how the thumb works. Uh, we're not going to take it out tonight because our paint's still tacky and I don't want it sitting outside in case it rains or something and ruin my new paint. So uh, we're going to go ahead and I'll demonstrate it real quick and then uh, the next video we'll actually be using it. But uh, those little reflective strips on the sides, don't get brake cleaner on them. It eats them right off. So I'm going to have to order a new one for this side and take a heat gun and finish getting that off. So let's see how this thumb works.
Well, there it is. Turned out good. I like it. Can't wait to take it out and try it. We actually got some work coming up that's it's gonna work real well for it. We get to tear down the old fertilizer shed, so it's gonna really like chewing through that. All right, so I'm gonna go home and get something to eat. It is that time of the day. So thank you for watching, greatly appreciate it. And be watching for videos using the new work brow thumb. Well, you've seen us using the new work brow quick coupler, but now we got the thumb on. So I know a lot of guys have been waiting for this episode and we finally got around to it. So, all right, time to go eat.